This is Carl at National RV Detroit. I'm going to walk you through this 2021 Sunset Trail Model 331 BH. Okay. All right, so I'm on the door side of the trailer, moving towards the rear. And here we are at the outside kitchen. Okay. Now, keep in mind, this is a Quick Connect LP fitting here. The Quick Connect fitting has a valve handle on it, which is right here, this black thing. So it's got to be in parallel with the fitting in order to be open. So keep that in mind. You're going to use that fitting to connect your cooktop here, your grill. Uh, it has a hose, which will be right here. Let me fish it out. And so that will plug in right there. Okay. If you can see that. You have obviously have water. Uh, 110 volt AC refrigerator that turns on as soon as you plug the trailer in. You got steps going into the bathroom, the second bathroom. Right here. As you can see. So this has a separate black tank from the bathroom up front. Just so you know this one has two black tanks. This trailer. Uh, your steps, your main steps, fold into the trailer of course. They're very stable. To adjust the the length of the legs for the terrain. Each side has a pin. You can pull this pin completely out and slide the legs up and down and adjust the, the legs accordingly, the length of the legs accordingly. You have a power awning with an LED strip, outside speakers. You have um, power stabilizer jacks on both sides, uh, or I mean on the front and rear. One switch for the front, one switch for both the rear jacks too. So. Um, the front jacks are just hooked up to one switch and so are the rear. You just extend it this way. Very simple. You don't lift the trailer with it. You um, take the shake out of it. You take the, the wiggle out of it, okay? Um, now, let me just come around and look at the other side real quick here so I can see what we got here. All right, so now you can get a crank that will fit this. This is the other side. so. Um, there's one just, uh, fitting just like this in the rear. It's a, it's a shaft with a, a pin through it. Um, and you can get a crank that'll actually fit in there and you can crank the, them manually if you have to. So to get yourself out of trouble, you can do that. It does not come with it though. For The only crank it comes with is the stabilizer or is the power tongue jack, jack crank. If this was to fail, you can um, put the crank right on there and, and crank it manually. That's the small crank in here, right there. Okay. All right, so, let's see where we left off here. This is your hitch, obviously. It's a, it's a uh, Reese um, weight distribution hitch with some built-in sway control features. Um, you get a power, uh, I mean, you get a deep cycle marine battery, two LP tanks, of course. Your, um, this, this, this little hook up here is in case you want to add a solar battery charger to charge your battery. You could plug it in right there. Okay. Um, of course, in a power tongue jack, like I mentioned. This is your water station here. Now, I left this panel off here just to show you that. Let me get in here and show you. To winterize this trailer, of course, I can't get into the whole thing, but I can give you a general idea. This hose right here which goes back to this, all the way back to this valve, if you can see it, right there. So right now this valve is parallel with this line here. This line goes down to the fresh water tank. So right now if you turn on the water pump, it will draw water from the fresh water tank. When you're winterizing, you'll change the position of this valve like so. So it draws through this hose here, right? And then you'll just stick this end into a gallon of antifreeze. Oh, now I made a mess here. Hold on. Let me get a rag. Um, into a gallon of antifreeze. You got a rag on you? I need that rag quick, please. I don't want to get this trailer, wet water in this trailer here. So you, um, you can draw it right from a gallon of antifreeze into the system, which makes it real simple. Okay, there we go. Okay, so I'm going to put it back into camping mode so it'll draw from the fresh water tank right now. Okay, so that's... That's so it'll draw from the tank. So keep in mind, when you want to winterize, you can draw the antifreeze in that way. And that's, of course, your water pump right there, okay? All right. Okay, so now um, 
to the most common way to get water into this trailer is through the city water hookup. So you're just going to basically hook your hose up to here, turn it on, and it pressurizes the whole trailer. You're ready to go. Now, if you were to go to a campsite, a campground that does not have plumbing on the campsites, you can pre-fill your fresh water tank right here. You would just fill this tank, and you can use this pump, obviously, to pump the water. So it'll the trailer will behave just like it has city water hookup, but you'll be pumping it out of your tank. All right, this is a kill switch for the battery, off, on. You'll shut it off when you put it into the storage. That's the only time you shut it off. Uh, obviously, the, the tow vehicle charges the battery so you want it on when you're pulling it, and the power converter charges the battery so you want it on when you're camping. So you only turn that off when you're storing it. Now, you have two black tank flushes here because you have two black tanks, right? Uh, I'll give you an idea what the black tank flush does over here. All right, so this, this would be for your main bathroom right here. I'm going to close these because we're water testing it. So you're going to hook your hose, your dump hose right to there. Obviously the other end goes in the dump station. Then you're, the black tank, which is the valve is right here, holds toilet water and waste. The gray tank holds sink and shower water. So you'll pull the black tank first and dump it. It's the dirtiest, skankiest of the water, right? So then you'll pull the gray water second because it's cleaner dirty water than the black water. So it washes the hose out somewhat. Then leaving this black tank valve open you'll come around here with your hose you'll hook it right up to the um, black tank flush and it'll spray the inside of your tank and clean off the sensors that sort of thing so it has a it has a flush for the front and the back black tanks okay so um, keep that in mind so this is just the outside of your water heater this is a new style Dometic water heater they didn't change their style forever this is sort of a hybrid between Atwood, which they bought, and Dometic, the best of both. So, basically, the, the switch is operated our inside. That's very simple. Uh, to drain it is right here, right? This is a pressure release valve. Always release the pressure before you drain it or you get drenched because it'll shoot out a gallon of water on you. So, um, keep in mind, though, you never drain it or vent it when you have hot water in it, of course. I know that's, you know goes without saying but these days nothing goes without saying so um, you have to remember that uh, you have to you have to let it cool down because you don't want to scald yourself or worse so make sure it's cool all right I'll also show you the back of this water heater inside it's behind the toilet in the main bathroom and uh, there are bypass valves for winterizing it so I'll show you that okay all right so let's move on down this is a 50 amp system so you got a big 50 amp cord these are your other dump valves here Right, you got three, uh, two gray, two more gray tanks, and the black tank for the bathroom over there, or in the back, I should say, but not over there. <laughs> um, that's your again your 50 amp cord. Now you have a ladder, which is a great thing because you got to go up and inspect the roof three times a season, every 90 days or so. You go up there and walk around, or else have somebody else do it. Uh, check all the sealant on the roof, look for cracking or separation. Some year, sometime, someday you'll find it and you'll have it taken care of immediately. So every trailer has to be inspected, not just this one, every trailer ever built. So keep that in mind, you have to do that, it's very important. Also, this tells us this is pre-wired for a backup camera. If you get one, it takes a Furion camera that fits in that housing. Uh, we sell them here. No matter where you get it from, make, just make sure you get the right one that fits in there, okay? This is a sprayer. Up front in the pass-through compartment is, I don't know if you saw it, is a blue coiled sprayer. That is patches in right there, or hooks right there. This is where your satellite and video are hooked up, and it's got a power booster. Okay, and back around. All right, so let's go inside. And I'll quickly go to the back of the toilet to show you where the, well, because we are just talking about water. So I'll tell you where the bypass valves are. All right, this is the panel that goes on it right here. I'm going to put it back on before you get here. You can see I removed it right here behind the toilet. Okay, so let me see if I can get a picture of it now. So these valves here, let me see, I don't see it. Right there, I guess it's better to look on the other side. Whoops, I'm sorry, on the other side. I thought you could see them better probably. Yes, so these are the bypass valves here. Right now, the handle is parallel going into the water heater and coming out, so it's in camping mode. Cold water will go in, hot water will come out. Before you pump an antifreeze into the system when you're winterizing, you can't get antifreeze into the water heater because it'll leave a really foul taste and smell. So they give you bypass valves. So what you would do is you would change the position of these valves so they're parallel with 
this line here called a bypass line, right? It just loops around. So the antifreeze will not go into that water heater tank. It'll just bypass it. So you always do that before you pump antifreeze in. But I'm going to put it back to camping mode. It's ready to go like this. Keep in mind before you winterize, you always bypass the water heater. Okay, I'm going to shut the TV off. I don't know if I turned it on, but... And the fireplace will go off too. Here, let me just show you that while I'm standing here. The fireplace is a space heater, right? So you have the remote right here. And um, you can do this. Low, high, low, high. So that's the fan speed, right? So it does have a blower in it, and it will really heat this area really well. You have a timer, okay? You can uh, change the, uh, the look of the fire if you want. You can change even more here, right? So it's basically a space heater, works on 110 AC. It'll take the chill out, it'll heat this common area really easy without, on those nights where it's cooler or mornings where it's cooler and you don't want to use up your LP, you can just turn that on and off, okay? All right, so I'll set that there. While I'm standing here, I don't normally do it this way, but I'm here. Your, your sound system, you can stream off the USB right here, of course. You can look, hook up with Bluetooth wirelessly with your phone or your tablet and stream that way. You have two zones, zone A and zone B. A is inside the trailer, B is outside the trailer. Um, you ha this is an HDMI in, so if you want to run into this system with a game machine, for example, or a, a Blu-ray player, um, you can go straight in right there, all right? And the TV, of course, works like any other TV. The only thing to remember is, uh, let's see if we even have to remember it. Yeah, the switch is here for the antenna uh, on your roof right there, okay? That's how you turn it on and off. All right, so let me go back over to the door. Well, I normally would do it. So this is your control panel. Um, your awning, you can see you extend it this way. As you can see it going out or coming in. It goes out eight feet, and you'll see the awning tube when you're already out, so you'll know that you're, you're fully extended. Never leave it out unattended, so if you're leaving the campsite, you always roll it in so the wind does not damage it. It'll happen in just a flash, so always make sure when you're not there, you roll it in. you got your three slide-out uh, controls here. Lights, of course. Now, I told you that you have a water pump, which is right here. You can light your water heater on gas here, or light it on electric. Most people use electric. Always remember, you always have, have to make sure you have water in the water heater tank before you turn on any power source, or else you'll dry fire it and damage it. So, uh, right now when you receive it, it will have water in it, but keep in mind that you always have to make sure there's water in it before you turn it on. Uh, to check your battery, which is charged here, always check when you're not plugged in though. Fresh water tank is empty, black water tank is empty, gray and gray are empty. Now here, is, this is for your back black tank here. So. It's empty also, so you have to check your black tank in the back for the rear toilet, the toilet for the bunk room. You'll uh, check it right here, separate of the panel, okay? Uh, your levels, obviously, they graduate up in one-third increments as, they, as it fills. These will light up in one-third increments. When you get past two-thirds, you got to start thinking about dumping your uh, black and gray tank. While we're standing here, your thermostat is very simple. Um, you light it up this way, then you go through the modes, low, auto. Always you try to use auto. Um, okay. Heat. Fan. Cool, which is air conditioner. And then of course back to heat and then off. Now there's a there's a lag time. Anytime you, you turn on the air conditioner, let's say, there's gonna be a good six second lag time before anything happens, so keep that in mind. Um, Alright. Let me cool this down the proper way there. Okay. Um, now this is your carbon monoxide and LP gas detector down here. It should always be green. There is a self-test button that you can push right there if you just want to make sure it's working. Like every spring or something, you can always test it out. But the LED should always be green. If it goes out, it's detected carbon monoxide or LP gas. So you get everybody out of the trailer, uh, leave the door open, shut the gas off at the front, and figure out what's going on. Okay. This device here is the power converter. So what it does, it converts 110 AC to 12 volt DC. So you have 110 AC on this side, regular household type circuit breakers, and they're all labeled, okay? Then the power is converted to 12 volt DC over here. You got 12 volt fuses, and they're all labeled, okay? Um, if any of these fuses were to blow, it'll light up, and you can actually see it through this tinted plastic here, so you would know. Also, when you're plugged into shore power, this is a battery 
tender. So it'll sense how much energy your battery has. If it's low, it'll send 10 amps or whatever it needs. If it's charged, it'll just trickle a couple amps, but it'll always keep it charged up. Okay? Alrighty. So, let's see. Obviously, the table folds down into a bed. So you can put the tabletop in between these two cleats here, put the back cushions over the table to create a bed. This here is a fold-out um, three-panel uh, hide-a-bed with foam panels. So you remove the back panels and set them over here. Then you're going to grab it here and you're going to pull it out, put the legs down, right? And then fold the back panel down and you got a pretty decent hide-a-bed. It's not like they used to be, it's pretty good. Okay. Um, Let's see, the refrigerator runs on DC, that's all. It runs, when you're towing the trailer, your car alternator will charge the battery, which runs the refrigerator. And when you're at the campground plugged in, your power converter will convert the power to, to 12 volt DC and run the refrigerator. So, it'll always, always be powered. Your microwave works like any other microwave. This is a range hood vent here, okay, with a light. Okay, so let me make sure what we're dealing with here. Let me look outside for a quick second here. Okay, all right. This is your range here, of course. It's very simple. You just spark it to light it. I assume the gas is still on. So we'll find out in a minute here. So here, this is the sparker. It turns clockwise in order to light it. So we'll give it some gas. Turn it clockwise. As you can see, the flame lit for the burner. Okay, each burner has a knob, of course. Now the oven is a little different. This is your oven knob. Basically it has a pilot light. The pilot light is down here, all the way to the back. Okay? You can see you can spark this way, you see spark it in there. So what you do is you put it towards the flame to the flame, which means whoops, I'm sorry, let me do it again so you can see it on this camera. You push it towards the flame, which means pilot light. You depress it and hold it. You continue to hold it. Then you spark it by turning this clockwise until the pilot light lights. Once the pilot light lights, you continue to hold this for another um, 10 seconds or so to heat it up and then you go to operating temperature okay so of course when you when you shut it off the flame goes out but so does the pilot light so you have to remember you have to light the pilot light each time you use the, uh, the oven All right. okay so let's see what else we have here I guess we'll go towards the front because well, now let's go towards the back it's just a little bit back here there's not a whole lot to show you of course, um, this bunk folds up and out of the way, and this you have a seat here. The seat jackknifes flat into a bed. You also can put this panel down, of course, for cups and uh, to set a, sort of a table. You can hook. You can put a TV here, and it has the hookups right up here, as you can see, antenna and power. So you can do that. It's pretty self-explanatory. The uh, bathroom. I'll show you on this toilet here, basically. Um, the thing to know about RV toilets is you can't use them dry. So when you get to the campground, you're going to plug in the trailer, hook up the water, then you'll come in here, your black tank is empty, right? The black tank is right down there, right? That's just residual water pressure you're seeing right there. So you got to have chemical and water to start using it. So you'll put one dose of whatever chemical you use, whatever toilet chemical you prefer, you'll put one dose right in there. You find the dose, obviously, by reading the directions. Then you're going to step on the flush pedal and hold it down. When you do that, water will come swirling out and start filling the black tank. You just hold it for a few minutes to put about a gallon or so of water in the tank. The bottom line is you can't use it dry or without chemical, so you always have to put chemical in it and a little bit of water, gallon or two. It doesn't have to be exact by any means, just some water in there, okay? That's important. Um, as I move back up towards the front, well, obviously we, we go through the bathroom to get to the bedroom. The sink and shower works like any other sink and shower. Uh, the toilet uh, is right here, so it's pretty much the same model, so remember the same thing. Chemical, and step on it and put a, that's the black tank directly below you, put about a gallon or so of water in it before you start using it. If you don't, you'll regret it. You'll never do it twice. The, the smell is, is un, unbelievable, and it can get hard as a rock, so it's just a problem. So make sure there's water and chemical. Okay, always use your fan with the shower. You want to pull the humidity out of the trailer because these things are built super tight these days. Okay, so I think we've covered everything. Let me look around and make sure. I believe we have, though. Yep, sure enough. So, all right, so first of all, thanks for purchasing your trailer here at National RV Detroit. Second, um, 
Don't forget to inspect your roof, like I told you, every 90 days or three times a season. That's important, very important. Anybody who owns a trailer has to do that. Also, um, always bypass your water heater before you winterize. I'm going to replace the two panels that I showed you. Uh, ev everything is screwed together with a number two square headed screw, so you need a drill with a number two square headed bit in it to remove the panels. Keep that in mind. Okay? Alright, well thank you very much.